scratching swipe coming up on this week's show. Robotic rehab, the tech that's helping people walk again. I get cold, very cold, in order to rejuvenate my body. And we've got all the latest from E3. Welcome to Swipe. This week we're at the UK's largest neurological rehabilitation event. It's where medical professionals come to showcase some of the latest cutting edge technologies trying to help people recover from brain and spinal cord injuries. In a moment, I'll be trying out sub-zero therapy. That's why I'm in my gym kit. But before then, Chris has been looking at what else is here. Claire Lomas was paralyzed in a horse riding accident in 2007. But thanks to this bionic suit, she's able to walk again. Rewalk provides powered hip and knee motion that mimics natural leg movement. It's helped her take part in a marathon, and last month she completed the London 10K. The wearable exoskeleton, now in its sixth generation of models, is designed to keep people with spinal cord injury fit. My injuries uh, means I'm paralyzing the chest down, so I've got no feeling from the chest down and no movement. So just trusting the grounds there when you can't feel anything is the first thing to get used to. Sitting in a chair all the time is not good for you. A uh, backache I get. When, I, when I'm upright in, in the suit, my spine feels an inch longer. You always in a chair have got flex legs. Um, when I'm sleeping, I've got flex legs, everything. So when I get into the suit, to have my legs straight stretches, my hamstrings, my calves, um, and just the standing position is totally different. This event showcases the latest in neurological rehabilitation equipment like Luna, a recovery robot that rebuilds strength in people with muscle damage. We can detect the electrical signals coming from your muscles from inside, and by that we can automate physical therapy. So a physio, a physio will just supervise more patients, help more patients recover. It even includes an inbuilt gaming system so patients can have fun while they get better. Also on show is the latest in sports technology, for athletes recovering from injuries or looking to improve performance. This smart pill monitors your body temperature. Once swallowed, it takes measurements from inside your intestines. The data is then transmitted wirelessly back to a portable console. As you exercise, ideally wearing more appropriate clothing than me, you get real-time information. It's meant to stop you overheating while training. Lots of the products here aren't available yet in the UK but they give a glimpse of what we might be seeing in the health sector in the coming years. Chris Cregan, Sky News. Stay with us still to come. I'll be finding a place to chill, literally. That's right after a roundup of this week's tech news. Apple had its worldwide developers conference this week, announcing some revamps to keep the iPhone fresh after flagging sales. It's opening up Siri, its digital voice assistant, to outside developers, so you could soon get an Uber or make Skype calls by asking Siri. Other announcements include changing the name of its operating system to macOS and enabling Apple Pay on Safari. Good news for Eric, the robot has hit his crowdfunding target. We first showed you Eric when we featured the Science Museum's campaign to raise £35,000 to bring the UK's first robot back to life using original archive materials for reference. After being built in 1928, Eric vanished without a trace. And as far as prototypes go, we think this one might get a few fans. It's a robotic laundry machine that apparently folds clothes in 10 seconds. The startup behind Foldymate claims it can steam and soften your items too. You'll be able to decide whether it's worth the reported price tag of around £600 when it's released. Stick around for our highlights from E3. Now, if you've never seen one of these before, it's called a cryotherapy chamber. It's basically a big tube of cold with temperatures as low as minus 140 degrees C. <laughs> it's said to have a rejuvenating effect on the whole body. And of course, I'm going to have a go. But first, I need our expert over here to give me some protective handwear. Why okay, so am I putting this on? Or is it obvious? <laughs> yeah, it's basically because when, the, uh, when you get into the chamber, Due to the extreme cold, the blood rushes to your core to protect your organs. So it's there to protect your extremities. Okay, ready to go in. That is literally getting into a freezer, isn't it? Just uh, step onto the... Does it. it matter which way I face? No, it doesn't matter which way you face. I'm going to raise the floor now. 
this is really as cold as it it's looks. It's freezing. How long am I meant to stay in Up here? Up to for? three minutes max. Three minutes? Is this yes. what athletes do? Exactly right. After a heavy session, heavy workout, for rehabilitation. Okay, so remind me of the benefits, what's happening to my muscles right now. Right now, all the blood is rushing away from all the extremities of your body, straight to the core, to the organs, to protect the organs. When you come out and you start to warm up again, the blood will start to come back to your, your skin, your capillaries, but they'll be filled with nutrients and oxygen. They'll be oxidized. So it will be a replenishing and rejuvenating feeling when you come out of the, out okay. of the sauna. Are you sure this isn't dangerous in any way? It's absolutely fine. It's been tried and tested. Let's take me back down because I want to come out and feel the benefits absolutely. of my muscles. Absolutely. <laughs> How do you feel? Cold? What now? What do I do? Keep moving now. Keep moving. Keep moving. That's it. Coach, That's I've it. got to say, this kind of science, I, I mean, it's quite impressive, isn't yes, it? I like yes. to think that it works, but it's just getting cold, really. There's nothing new about that. It's just okay. being cold. Well, the beauty of this is two minutes in here is like one hour in an ice bath. So you can imagine the benefits for the elite sports athletes who want to get a quick cold fix and then on their way to recovery. Is it normal that my legs feel a bit numb? Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely, exactly, that's the, that's the cold sensation. The blood will start to rush back to the capillaries, which start to dilate, rushing back all the goodness, all the nutrients, all the, the oxygen. Right, I'll take okay. your word for it. Okay. Go for a run. Go for a run. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm just going to concentrate on thawing out. And what better way to do it than by using an acoustic sound wave therapy machine? But while I do, let's talk to Alicia and find out what's been going on in LA this week at the biggest gaming event of the year. So since the launch of the Xbox One, Microsoft has had a barrage of criticism thrown at it, saying that the Xbox just isn't powerful enough to run the best games. What Microsoft has done at this year's E3 is it's unveiled a brand new console that it's calling Project Scorpio. Now this is going to be packed with six teraflops of processing power. It's got a brand new CPU, a brand new GPU. Fundamentally what it means is that Microsoft has plunged into a new virtual reality race. It's going to have a more powerful console that can deal with everything that 4K gaming and virtual reality can throw at it, which means that Microsoft is finally going head to head with Sony in terms of VR. So off the back of this kind of virtual reality news, we've got more and more developers who are taking massive AAA console games and turning them into virtual reality experiences. So we've got a brand new Fallout 4 in virtual reality experience. We've got Star Wars Battlefront. We've got Final Fantasy. Lots of game makers are really worried about how they're going to get you guys, the players, to buy these really expensive virtual reality headsets. Well. If you've got your brand new favorite games, if you've got Batman and you can play it and actually be inside the Batman mask, the idea is that maybe you'll go out and buy an Oculus Rift or a PlayStation VR and it's setting up a brand new audience for virtual reality. So in terms of the conferences from E3, it's largely been accepted that Sony had one of the best conferences from the show because it delivered exactly what the fans wanted. There was very little talking, there was very little of developers coming on stage, and it was all just gameplay trailer after gameplay trailer after gameplay footage. And it was just a bit of a fan favorite. We saw The Last Guardian, we saw Horizon Zero Dawn, which is a brand new IP set a thousand years into the future in this kind of post-apocalyptic world where mechanical dinosaurs roam the earth and you play as a girl called Alloy who's armed with a bow and arrow in this kind of weird world where it's prehistoric meets post-apocalyptic. It looks really, really cool. It was crammed with brand new games. One of my personal favourite games from the conference has to be Death Stranding, which is the brand new game from Hideo Kojima. First of all, just because he entered the conference in this bus, most people have red carpets. Hideo Kojima had this gigantic neon lit kind of light carpet that he walked down. And the reason why that's such a big deal is because this is Hideo Kojima's massive comeback game. It's going to be pretty interesting. Nintendo's conference was, well, for the first time, it wasn't a conference, it was more of a live stream, but the biggest thing that they revealed was Nintendo's new Zelda game called Zelda Breath of the Wild. Kind of sounds like it's some sort of mouthwash, but it's actually the latest game in the Zelda series, and it breaks a lot of 
the tropes that we've seen before in previous Zelda games. So this time it's very much an open world RPG with real survival based elements. It's all making it more of a survival based RPG game, a lot more open than anything we've previously seen in Zelda. And so far it looks like it's going down well with fans online. The reception's been really, really solid. Well, that's it for this week. Take a look at Sky News on mobile, tablet, catch up, Sky Q and Snapchat for all the latest tech stories throughout the week. I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.